evening and welcome on this most holy night to this morning service. As we commemorate the last supper that Jesus shared with his disciples, his friends and his followers. How could we have imagined last morning Thursday that a year later we would be worshipping together and yet worshipping apart, though thankfully not for much longer. As we come into the presence of holy mystery, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Our Lord Jesus Christ says, If you love me, keep my commandments. Unless I wash you, you have no part in me. Let us confess to Almighty God our sins against his Lord, and ask him to cleanse us. Father, be eternal. Giver of light and of grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have said, in what we have said, and in what we have done. Through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past, and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And we hear the assurance of God's forgiveness for all that is past. May the Father forgive us by the death of his Son and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. Amen. We remain standing to sing together the words of the Gloria. Glory Amen. to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. We pray the collect for this morning's thing. God our Father, your Son Jesus Christ was obedient to the end and drank the cup prepared for him. May we who share his table watch with him through the night of suffering and be faithful. Amen. We sit now for our victory. reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the holy, whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbour in obtaining one. The land shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it of it. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt both human beings and animals, on all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, Throughout your generations, you shall observe it 
as a perpetual ordinance. This is the word of the Lord. And thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I brought your hymn number 463, Lord Jesus Christ, Living Lord. Table, got up from the table, 
took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter who said, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean, and you are clean. But not all of you, for he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said, Do you know what I have done to, it, for, to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I, for I have set you an example that you should also do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and we glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You should also love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love for one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks to you, Lord Christ. Christ. May my words be in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Be seated. On this holy night, Jesus gives his disciples a mandate in Latin, a mandatum, which becomes Monday, the night of the commandment, to love one another as I have loved you. It is perhaps easier for us this year to imagine how confusing that first Holy Week was for the people around Jesus. As one year on, we tried to cope with the confusion, misunderstandings and misinformation surrounding this pandemic and the present lockdown. So perhaps we can understand a bit better why Jesus' closest friends seem not to quite understand what is going on and perhaps feel, as we sometimes can, like they are missing something in the moment, like there is more to this than meets the eye, or that things are not really as they appear. From the Passion readings, it seems the only people who truly understand what is going on this week are the religious leaders who want Jesus killed. They can see that he is changing everything and what it will mean for their power, for their authority, for their livelihoods. At the beginning of this Holy Week, as Jesus entered Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, the people made it a triumphal procession. They cut branches from the trees and tossed their clothes on the road so Jesus doesn't get dusty and dirty riding into the city. They treated his visit to Jerusalem like a victory parade, singing praises and getting the crowd to cheer along, shouting about their Messiah, unaware that by the end of this week there is to be a different shout out to crucify him. As the week goes on, Jesus keeps trying to show his followers what God is truly doing, but they cannot see or will not see. Instead, they choose to focus on power and importance, misplaced bravery and foolish promises, and not on Jesus' warnings on what is to come. Even the woman who this week anoints Jesus with her perfume is scolded for her actions, 
And even though Jesus insists she is doing a good thing for him, it is apparently too much for poor Judas to see money pouring down Jesus' face and not into his, pay, into his purse. But Judas is not the only one who is confused by what Jesus is doing this week. Throughout the ages, church and people turned Jesus' words around, missed the point, and still do. Jesus says, the poor will always be with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish. It has somehow, though, been decided that means that there will always be poverty. When we ought to understand it to mean that the church, the body of Christ, will be found with the poor, that its place will be beside and among those whom the world has cast aside. When it comes to tonight's Passover meal, everyone gathered there knows what to expect. The ritual has been the same for hundreds of years, and yet tonight it isn't quite what it looks like. As Jesus breaks bread and pours a cup, and with just a few different words, changes everything. The betrayer is sitting at the table, sharing the feast. The denier is sitting at the table, sharing the feast. The deserters are sitting at the table, sharing the feast. And not one of them understands what is happening, or is about to happen, before the ending of this night. At the very first Lord's Supper, and at every single communion table since that time, the people at the table enter into a holy mystery in all their unworthiness, in all their confusion, in all their brokenness. And Jesus meets them, hands them bread and wine, knowing that none will ever truly comprehend the grace of this moment. For this meal today is also never quite what it looks like. Yet surprisingly, Others are expected to fully understand before they can be invited to fully share. At a normal morning service, church people know what to expect. The ritual and the liturgy has been the same for several generations, and yet even today, tonight, isn't quite what it usually looks like. We have had a distant gathering of priests, deacons, lay leaders, to affirm ministerial vows in a remote prison mass service in Bradford Cathedral. A second Holy Week lockdown means better preparation and planning, but there is no blessing of holy oils brought back into the parishes, for last year's oils were never used. There is for us no traditional morning washing during this service, for you are not here, so there is no one to serve or to share in the humility, the sense of loss, shame and sin that we encounter on this Monday night. The one remaining constant is Jesus' words. A new commandment I give you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you, you should also love one another. At the ending of our service tonight, we shall, as is tradition, prepare the church to be Christ's tomb. We shall strip away the earthly trappings of crosses, vessels and icons, and by a lonely light on the altar, read the dismissal gospel. Then with hearts and minds prepared, we shall wait at the cross tomorrow, and perhaps allow ourselves time to send some of the confusion, some of the disciples' feelings of being a little off kilter, of wondering what we've missed something even now. Holy Week raises many questions. It is a time of confusion, of uncertain hope, and that is particularly true for the church in this time we now live through. There will be consequences that we cannot yet see, circumstances that we cannot yet perceive, and without a doubt, lives and livings will be changed far more than we can begin to comprehend at this moment in time. During his ministry, Jesus shares his life 
with his not so very bright disciples. He shares this last supper with them, knowing they are understanding nothing, knowing they will run away when the going gets tough, knowing their future will be challenging. And whatever our futures, we know he will be found alongside us too. During the stripping of the altar and the sanctuary, I invite you, if you wish, to ponder on how those first disciples may have felt, trying to make sense of the confusion, doubt and deceit and fear of the unfolding events of this holy night. To ponder where in the passion story you may be. Perhaps at the table with Jesus, asking, is it I who betrays you? In the garden, perhaps not watching, but sleeping. Around the fire in the courtyard, protesting, I don't know him. With the crowd on the pavement, shouting, crucify. Or weeping with the women of Jerusalem as Jesus passes by. Or perhaps we shall be found at the Mount of Olives, in vigil at the foot of the cross, kneeling, praying before the dying King of the Jews, offering our deepest self to God, resting in faith, hope and love, waiting for the glorious Easter morning resurrection night. Father, on this night he was betrayed. Your Son, Jesus Christ, washed his disciples' feet. We commit ourselves to follow his example of service. Lord, hear us and humble us. On this night he prayed for his disciples to be one. We pray for the unity of your church. Lord, hear us and unite us. On this night, she prayed for those who were to believe through their message. We pray for the mission of your church. Lord, hear us and renew our zeal. On this night, he commended them to love, but suffered rejection himself. We pray for the rejected and unloved. Lord, hear us and fill us with your hope. On this night, he remembered, he reminded them that if the world hated them, it hated him first. We pray for those who are persecuted for their faith. Lord, hear us and give us your peace. We pray also for those who are ill or in need at home, in hospital or receiving hospice care, including health. Christine, Penny, Steve, Amrin, Alison, Isabel, Jill, Margaret J, Carolyn, Rachel and Debbie, as well as those who have become, uh, begun long-term medical treatment. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. On this night, he accepted the cup of death and look forward to the new wine of the kingdom. We remember those who have died in the peace of Christ, including those recently departed, <coughs> especially Margaret T. and Dennis B., as well as those whose years of mind occurs at this time. We pray for their families, and in particular, we think of all who mourn sudden bereavement and recent losses. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we 
prepare to be with Jesus in bread and wine. Let us stand and share the peace. Jesus says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Hymn number 492. Love is his word. we are with our crucified and risen Lord. We know that as he was with them in the upper room, so our Lord is here with us now. Until the kingdom of God comes, let us celebrate this feast. Blessed are you, Lord God of the universe. You bring forth bread from the earth. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of the universe. You create the fruit of the vine. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right to give you thanks, Father most holy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For on this night he girded himself with a towel and taking the form of a servant, washed the feet of his disciples. He gave us a new commandment, that we should love one another as he has loved us. Knowing that his hour had come, in his great love, he gave this supper to his disciples to be a memorial of his passion, that we might proclaim his death until he come again and feast with him in his kingdom. Therefore earth unites with heaven to sing a new song of praise. We too join with angels and archangels as they proclaim your glorious, your glory without end and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
accept our praise as Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, and as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember all that Jesus did. We remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and we look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, through him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise, blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the love of God, we sit to pray as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you humbled yourself in taking the form of a servant and in obedience died on a cross for our salvation. Give us the mind to follow you and to proclaim you as Lord and King to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. And we pray together, Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that in this wonderful sacrament you have given us the memorial of your passion. Grant us so to reverence the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may know within ourselves and show forth in our lives the fruit of your redemption. For you are alive and reign now and forever. Amen.
when the disciples had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Jesus prayed to the Father, if it is possible, take this cup of suffering from me. He said to his disciples, how is it that you are not able to keep watch with me for one hour? The hour has come for the Son of Man to be handed over to the power of the sinful man. Come, let us go. Christ was obedient unto death. Let us go and rest in Christ.